welcome to Aldersgate Online. Hope you've had a beautiful morning already. It is gorgeous out there, a little cold for us Southern Californians, but it is still gorgeous out there. It is wonderful to see your names pop up already, and thank you for letting us know where you are worshiping from, even what space in your own home you're worshiping from. That's always fun to see. Let's join together, say hello to one another, Pretend we're gathering at the church and say hello, greet one another. It is wonderful to be together. I want to say a special welcome to anybody that is new and joining us. We want to let you know that we believe in a God that desires to walk with us. It desires to walk with you. And, and this God desires to walk with each one of us and invites us to walk with each other and especially during the uh, difficult times that we can have somebody to lean on, to somebody to talk to, somebody to pray with. So if you are wanting to journey with a community, we want to invite you to go ahead and continue to journey with us on Facebook. Let us know. Uh, this is the way we are journeying. Uh, we are gathering in smaller communities as well. So let us know if you'd like to hear about those as well. Well, today uh, we are celebrating creation. Uh, many of us know it was Earth Day this past Thursday, and we are calling this Creation Sunday. And so as we start this service, I want to invite you to let us know what is your favorite national park. Okay, go put it in the comment. What is your favorite national park or what is a space? where you enjoy God's creation, a place where you truly enjoy God's creation. Go ahead and let us know, and, and maybe we can visit some of those places as well. You know, uh, there's a passage that says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And it's what it's saying is that all creation lets us know and shouts the praises of God and truly lets us know what God is like. As I was watching the powerful waves, images of powerful waves this past week, I just thought God is so powerful. And then when you look at the beauty of, of light and colors, you just think God is so beautiful. So let us know um, how maybe God uh, or creation reminds you of God. That's always interesting to, to see what grabs you in creation and let it know, let it be known that it reflects so much, so much of the glory and the beauty and the intimacy of God as well. Well, let us go to God in prayer. Dear gracious God, we thank you for who you are, the God of all creation. And Lord, on this day, we remember your handiwork, which is such a reflection of who you are. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to bless us during this time that we might be renewed in heart and mind and soul to care for your creation and, crea and care for all who inhabit your creation as well. Come, Holy Spirit, move powerfully, intimately, and sweetly in our souls this time. In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. Our opening hymn today is number 307, Christ is Risen. Let's sing. Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of days. Christ is risen, hush in wonder, all creation is amazed. is risen, rate your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk in gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection, not a servant but a friend. Jesus is our strong companion, joy and peace shall 
Christ is risen, earth and heaven nevermore shall be the same. Break the bread of new creation, where the world is still in pain. Tell its grim demonic chorus, Christ is risen, get you gone. God the first and last is with us, sing Hosanna. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. I uh, want to share a few announcements with us. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, there are many ways that we are continuing to journey together in smaller groups. So if you would like to join a small group specifically, it is a weekly gathering to check in with each other to uh, reflect on the past message and share ways that we might be able to support and encourage one another in this journey that we are on. So let us know if you're interested in joining a small group. We also have a prayer group that meets at 9 o'clock, uh, a Bible study at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays. And so let us know if you'd like to join one of those. Those are on Zoom as well. Um, we will be coming to you in May. The pastors and some leaders will be visiting uh, our church members and just uh, stopping at a distance and, uh, sh and sharing a, a moment and a blessing with one another. So let us know if you'd like a drive-by blessing. Uh, just go ahead and direct message us and let us know. You can also email the church office and we will put you on the rotation. This will be happening in the month of May, okay? There are many ways that we are seeking to be light in our community and uh, want to invite you once again. Uh, we've been hearing about so many of our church members who are involved in local organizations. And so we would like you to let us know which organization you are a part of. And we are going to be making a list so that so that others who are not may, are serving, uh, they can join in as well. So they can look at the list and maybe we can partner together. So many wonderful organizations in our local community. And uh, we invite you to go ahead and research on your own, but we are hoping to make a list. So please help us make that list for our church community and let, let us be light in our community. I want to highlight once again that we will be taking a virtual trip to three different countries and seeing the work of Zoe International, a wonderful organization that empowers orphans in different countries. We have been involved in Rwanda, but they are also involved in other countries. So this uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, April 27th to 29th, each morning at 6.30 a.m., I know it's early, but uh, what a blessing to be able to travel to these countries virtually. We wouldn't be able to do this um, unless we had this kind of technology. From 6.30 to 8 on Tuesday, we will go to Rwanda. On Wednesday, we'll go to Kenya. And then on Thursday, we will be able to go to India as well. So, so uh, join us. The link is there. Uh, sign up, and, you, and we will have an amazing time to see what God is doing in the other parts of our world. Well, let us continue in worship with the gift of music, and I believe Anna is our gift of music today.
Thank you, Anna. Thank you. As we come to this time of congregational prayer, we just invite you to lift up your own hearts of praise and thanksgiving for all that you are grateful for. Uh, you can type it in as well, but lift it up wherever you are. Um, just praise God. I also know that there is much that weighs on our hearts. Uh, cons thoughts and uh, feelings, emotions regarding a lot that is going on. I uh, want to let you know that our church will be celebrating and want to invite you to celebrate uh, Mark Hendrickson's precious life. He was a retired pastor, faithful member of our church family, beautiful man. I was always so encouraged and strengthened by his presence and uh, so encouraged by his presence. And uh, he did pass away during this past year, and uh, we will be celebrating his life. It will be on his son's Facebook page, okay? So the link will be in the comments, and if you would like to know uh, how to participate, it will be on Facebook Live, on his son's Facebook Live. So let us join together. It is this Saturday, May 1st at 11 o'clock, okay? So if you can join us. And if you are not able to make it, let us praise God and lift up prayers for Sandra and her family as well. Well, there is much that weighs on our hearts, um, but today for our Creation Sunday, I'm going to go ahead and lift a prayer that has been put together by the Francis of Assisi Academy. And I thought it was a beautiful prayer. And so I want us to join this prayer together as a church family. As I've been reading this prayer and reflecting on what it takes for us to care for creation, a lot of the internal work that we need to do and the changes we need to make in our life are not just for creation, but how we actually treat one another as well. So let us pause before God and let us lift this prayer together. Creator of life, we come before you as a church community and we remember today that at your word the earth brought forth plants yielding seed and trees of every kind bearing fruit. The rivers, mountains, minerals, seas and forests sustained life. The eyes of all look to you 
to satisfy the needs of every living thing. And throughout time, the earth sustained life through the planetary cycles of days and seasons, renewal and growth. You open your hand to give creatures our food in the proper time. In your wisdom, you granted a Sabbath, a blessed time to rest in gratitude for all that you have given, a time to liberate ourselves from vicious consumption, a time to allow the land and all creatures to rest from the burden of production. But these days, O oh God, our living pushes the planet beyond its limits, our demands for growth, and our never-ending cycle of production and consumption are exhausting our world. The forests are leached, the topsoil erodes, the fields fail, the deserts advance, the seas acidify, the storms intensify. We have not allowed the land to observe her Sabbath, and the earth is struggling to be renewed. God, we saw that during this pandemic pause, the way your earth was renewed. So on this day, we ask you to grant us courage and show us how to observe a Sabbath for our planet. Strengthen us with the faith to trust in your providence. Inspire us with the creativity to share what we have been given. Teach us to be satisfied with enough. And as we proclaim a jubilee for the earth, Send your Holy Spirit to renew the face of your creation. Lord, help us. Make us quick to do your will, slow to judge our neighbor, and eager to care for your creation with wisdom, compassion, and love. And now, O oh God, we lift the prayer of the one who came to proclaim good news to all creation. As he taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading today is from Romans 8, 18 through 25. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Well, good morning. And as uh, Pastor Ken mentioned, Thursday was Earth Day, and planet Earth is amazing, right? And I, I love the fact that our church so enjoys nature, enjoys creation. And I, I'm just, at times, I think we've all had those moments where we're just overcome with the beauty of the Earth. And I know Pastor Ken already asked us to weigh in, and I, I saw some of the comments on some of the national parks. But I want to just invite us once again to reflect on what are those spots on earth that we love? What are those spots on earth that just uh, fill us with awe and wonder? And I invite you to just continue to share those. You know, it may be a national park. It may be somewhere far away. It may be somewhere local. It may be somewhere that's known to others. It may be somewhere that's just known to you and your family. But what are those places on earth that you just love, that fill you with awe of God and the goodness of God's creation? You know, years ago, um, Cindy and I spent three months in Australia. And as part of that, we went to Keynes, Australia, which is awesome. It's such an awesome place. On one side, there is just tropical rainforest, and on the other side is the Great Barrier Reef. And as someone who loves to snorkel, the Great Barrier Reef for me is one of those places on Earth that I love. Now, granted, the Great Barrier Reef is 1,400 miles long, so I only saw a fraction of it. But the fraction that I saw, I loved. I loved being there. And, uh, you know, hanging in my office, uh, right up here in the church office, is a, a photograph of um, a beach called White Haven Beach, which is a part of the Great Barrier Reef on an island called Whitsunday Island. And I love this photograph. And I got this photograph specifically because it's somewhere that we didn't go to. It's somewhere that I still long to go to. I got this photograph in a way to point me to the future, to point me to, to God's future and what I still have to look forward to. So it, 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 it's heartbreaking in a way to realize that the Great Barrier Reef is dying. And, and not just in small ways, but in big ways, uh, due to warmer seas caused by, by climate change, the Great Barrier Reef has lost more than half of its corals since 1995. Planet Earth is beautiful. But planet Earth is breaking down. It's in bondage to decay. And this is a huge challenge that we're facing today. So here's our question this morning. What difference does Easter make in addressing this challenge? To get even more specific, is Easter good news for the earth? What would you say? Is Easter good news for the earth? For many years, I would have said, not really. <laughs> I, I would have said, Easter is good news for you and me. Easter means that, that Jesus has conquered death so that you and I can have eternal life. Easter means that we can go to heaven when we die. End of story. I, I would have focused on what Jesus did for people and ignored what Jesus did for the planet. But then one day I was reading something that a theologian named N.T. Wright wrote about Easter. And I came across this one sentence that grabbed my attention and changed my perspective. One sentence that transformed how I view the resurrection. Here's the sentence. What God did for Jesus on Easter morning, God intends to do for the whole world. What God did for Jesus on Easter morning, God intends to do for the whole world. Not just for you and me, but for the whole world, for all of creation. 
As N.T. Wright puts it, Jesus' resurrection is to be seen as the beginning of the new world, the first day of the new week, the unveiling of the prototype of what God is now going to accomplish in the rest of the world. Jesus' resurrection is the unveiling of the extreme makeover that God is going to do for the whole world. Which means Easter is not just good news for people. It's good news for the planet. Here's a question we have to ask. Given that creation is damaged and decayed, What is God going to do with it? Is God going to throw it away? Or is God going to restore it? This is an important question to ask because too often the church has said, "Mm, this world is headed for the trash dump. (laughs) God's going to throw it away like a moldy sandwich and our only hope is to get out of here in time. Those who hold this perspective see the world like the Titanic. They say the ship is going down. There's no point in even trying to repair it. The one thing we need to do is get on a lifeboat before the whole thing sinks. In religious terms, this means our focus is on getting souls to heaven. The world is going down. But that's okay as long as our soul gets up to heaven. The end of the story is getting to heaven where we will spend eternity. This is how a lot of us understand Christianity. But where is creation, planet Earth, in this storyline? See, this kind of thinking is very dualistic. In essence, it says there are two realms, the spiritual and the physical, the soul and the body. And the one which really matters is the spiritual, the soul. The one that really lasts is the spiritual, the soul. The one that God really cares about is the spiritual and the soul. The physical, the body, mm, not so much. The physical realm, our bodies, our mountains, our coral reefs, they're just temporary, and truth be told, they don't matter all that much to God. We might think this way, but Scripture doesn't. The resurrection forces us to reject this kind of dualism. The resurrection isn't about Jesus' soul going to heaven. The resurrection is about Jesus' body walking out of a tomb. On Easter morning, Jesus received a renewed, physical, resurrected body with the promise that we will receive renewed, physical, resurrected bodies in order to live on a renewed, physical earth that has been made one with heaven. The resurrection declares that God cares about the spiritual realm and the physical realm. That God cares about our souls and our bodies. My brother Jeremy and uh, his wife Joy, who live in India, visited us and stayed with us last week. And uh, Joy, when she was a child, had polio. In fact, she was in bed for years. And she now walks with a distinct limp. She's super active, amazingly active, but is limited in her mobility. Even staying with us, getting up and down our stairs, she had to be very cautious with that. It's a very distinct limp. And one morning, while they were staying with us, my wife Cindy came to me uh, at the breakfast table, and she just said, we had, Joy and I had this long talk last night. And at one point I told her, when the kingdom of God comes, Joy, we're going to hike together. We're going to run together. And my wife just had tears in her eyes, thinking of joy, being free to run. See, Easter, Easter is God's promise that one day our bodies will be free, free from polio, 
free from cancer, free from the chronic illnesses, aches, and pains that hobble us now, free to dance, free to run, free to to live as God's image bearers in God's renewed world. The resurrection tells us that God's creation is still good and that God is still committed to it. And doesn't that make sense, given the story of the Bible and how it begins? In Genesis 1, God creates the world, and it's good, and it's full of potential, and God wants it to thrive. So what does God do? God creates human beings in his own image to be in charge of it and to care for it on his behalf. Human beings are made in the image of God. That's the one thing that sets us apart from the rest of creation. We're made in the image of God. What does that mean? It means that we're made to represent God. We're made to show creation what the creator is like through our character and our actions to carry out God's agenda. It means that God put us in charge and made us responsible for creation, for its direction and development. Creation is God's project, and we are God's project managers. For whatever reason, God chose not to rule alone, but to delegate authority to human beings. God chose to to rule the world, to guide and care for it through us. God made human beings to partner with God in caring for creation so that it would thrive. God made us for a particular role, and this role is directly tied to the world around us, to the world of plants and animals and nature. When God made Adam... God put him in the Garden of Eden to work the land and to take care of it. That's why there's something about gardening that is so rewarding and meaningful. Whether we have one flower or or a lot of vegetables, there's something about caring for plants that resonates deep within us. And that's why there's, there's something about having a pet that is so rewarding. Pets really don't make any sense, do they? We spend all this money on pets, money on food, crazy amounts of money on vet bills. Uh, we jump through hoops to take care of them when we go on vacation. Uh, we spend valuable time taking them for walks. We may even limit where we live so that we can find a place that allow for pets. Why? As Genesis explains, we're wired to be connected to animals, to care for them on behalf of their creator. God made us to partner with God in caring for creation so that it would thrive. That's why we're here. But according to Genesis 3, we walked away from this partnership and responsibility. We were designed to rule under God's rule. Instead, we chose to be in charge on our own. And the minute we turned our back on God, we started abusing the authority God had given us. We started to look out for ourselves rather than to look out for the world. The result is that we've damaged the creation we were designed to develop. The result is that rainforests have suffered, and oceans and beaches have suffered, and birds and fish have suffered, ecosystems have suffered, and human beings have suffered. All of God's good creation has borne the brunt of our rebellion. But God is still committed to his creation. God is still committed to planet Earth. 
God still loves it. God still know that, knows that it's good. God still wants it to thrive. So God's not just going to throw it away. God's going to restore it, renew it, heal it. And, and how is God going to do that? By restoring, by renewing, by healing you. I want to make sure we hear this point. This is really important for us to understand. From a biblical standpoint, to get creation back on track, God has to get us back on track. For the world to thrive, we must reclaim our role and responsibility. To heal the planet, God has to heal us first. To renew the planet, God has to renew us first. And that's what Easter is about. God renewing people in order to renew the planet. God freeing his children in order to free his creation. Now this is the point that Paul makes in Romans 8. And I want us to listen again to these words. I know they're pretty dense. There's a lot here. But listen specifically to what Paul is saying about creation. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God, that's you and me, to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. When God's children are renewed, God's creation will be renewed. When God's people are set free, God's planet will be set free. Easter is good news for both the people and the planet. Big picture. This is what scripture is saying to us. We human beings were given a unique role in God's creation. But we walked away from this role and as a result, creation suffered. In his death and resurrection, Jesus restored us to our role. Jesus makes it possible for us once again to be God's children, to bear God's image in the world, to fulfill the task for which we were originally created. And creation can't wait for us to take that role again. Creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Because when we take our place under God and over the world, when we finally care for creation as we were created to do, creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay. Creation itself will be restored and renewed. All of it, every stream, every forest, every ocean, every reef. This is the hope of Easter. So what does this hope mean for us today? Should we just sit around playing Uno until this future comes? No, we are to invest in and build for this future. As God's image bearers, we are God's partners in bringing about this future. God didn't, uh, Jesus didn't rescue us so that we could escape the world. Jesus rescued us so that we could restore the world. We're still responsible for creation, for its direction and development. So this week, I want to invite us to do two things. First, I want to invite us to enjoy creation. I think one of the, the costs of COVID is that it's put us on screens a lot, <laughs> kept some of us inside a lot. And I want to encourage us this week to get outside 
and simply enjoy creation, to do some gardening, to take a walk, to play a game of soccer at the park, to paint a sunset. I know that on this Creation Sunday, today our youth group is is taking a a, a hike together at Irvine Park at 5 p.m. Living in light of the resurrection means celebrating and enjoying God's good creation. I also want to invite us to care for creation. To care for creation this week. And I I don't know what that looks like for you this week in particular. It may simply mean doing your work well and understanding that your work matters to God because it contributes in some way to the development of our world. It may mean mm, doing something global. With, With Earth Day just being last Thursday, There are a lot of initiatives in play right now to address climate change. Maybe you want to be part of these initiatives. Or or maybe you want to invest some time and money to protect or restore a part of creation that's dear to your heart. It may mean doing something local, really local, as in your backyard or your front porch. We have an environmental ministries team here in our church. And this team is inviting each of us to take one step this week to care for creation. Here are some of the steps that members of the environmental ministries team are taking. Making a donation to save the Manatee Club. Purchasing a, a bird feeder to feed birds in my area. Getting and using reusable sandwich bags planting dwarf uh, lantanas in pots on my patio because these plants benefit hummingbirds and butterflies. These are just a few examples of of what members of our church are doing to care for creation this week. So what is one step you can take to do that this week? Let's take this step and let's share with each other what it is. If there's, something, whoa, if there's something that you've already done or something you plan to do, let us know in the comment section and let's share that with each other this week. Let's use our social media this week to share with others how we are caring for creation. What God did for Jesus on Easter morning God intends to do for the whole world. Easter means hope not just for people, but also for the planet. So this week, let's live out this hope. Amen. I feel inspired. I'm a terrible gardener. I kill silk plants. But this week, I will be more conscientious about taking care of what has been entrusted to my care and making sure that I find ways to give a little bit back to the planet. We're going to end our part of the service with singing number 383. This is a day of new beginnings. Time to remember and move on Time to believe what love is bringing Laying to rest the pain that's gone For by the life and death of Jesus God's mighty spirit now as then Can make for us a world of difference as faith and hope are born again. Then let us with the Spirit's daring step from the past and leave behind our
disappointments, guilt and grieving, seeking new paths and sure to find. Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Amen. Amen. Please receive now this benediction. In the season of Easter, let us remember that Easter is a season that lasts 50 days. In this season of Easter, let us remember that Christ is alive and is making all things new and is inviting us to partner with God in caring for creation so that it will thrive. Let us do so this week. And as we do, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be ours now and forevermore. Amen.